Hi everyone, welcome to this channel again. Uh, let's talk about uh, again about the energy manager. Uh, this topic is quite close to me because I'm personally the energy manager uh, by law, by the legal requirement in Malaysia to help company to comply uh, under the current uh, legal requirement. I like to uh, discuss about in this video. Let's like discuss about uh, why should a company uh, having the energy manager in first place. Why? I'm talking about uh, in the context of beyond legal requirement. Beyond legal requirement. Because in Malaysia, currently there is a requirement on uh, appointing energy manager. They call it registered security energy manager or RIM to comply to the current legal requirement. I'm talking about uh, as a company. Who, uh, who is uh, having a big energy consumption. Okay, the, the energy consumption is quite uh, huge in terms of cost. Can maybe about 5% you know, of the uh, total operating cost of the uh, total operating cost monthly or yearly. So somehow, okay, this part, you know, having somebody dedicated to look into your energy management of the company is often being overlooked. Just, just put it this way, right? You want to maintain the quality of the product. Okay, so you have the quality manager or at least quality executive. And if you want to maintain certain degree of uh, good condition of your facilities or your equipment, so you have facilities uh, manager, facilities engineers, all right, or technical team who can ensure that your facility is uh, uh, is well managed, you know, well maintained. Even you have, uh, you have, you spend money. All that you spend money, you spend money on quality. Okay, you spend money on facility, and you spend money on people as well. You know, the, the human resource. So you have human resource manager. Even you have talent manager. Even for to have better communication for your company, uh, not directly, you know, somehow communication not directly impact in terms of somehow direct, direct revenue like production, right, you know, uh, or still. But you have communication uh, officer or uh, chief so-called you know, communication officer, somebody who can communicate on behalf of the company well. Unfortunately, all right, uh, having the engine manager in Malaysia is still being overlooked. Overlooked in, in the sense of, you know, we don't need somebody re dedicated for the job. Okay. Uh, so the role of energy manager can always uh, be parked, you know, or being played as a, another additional role or a secondary role to existing uh, executive or engineer or even manager. Okay, because uh, if you really want to manage things very well, right? Uh, you want to manage your energy very well for you to get uh, enjoy the benefit. You can get the best out of that, you know, in particular for energy management. At the end, you can reduce your energy consumption that leads you to your reduced energy costs. Or you can avoid, you know, in terms of energy avoidance, you know, so that if you avoid that particular cost, means that you can produce products or you can operate at lower energy consumption without compromising your quality, even better quality or output. Because energy management itself, just like facility management, quality management, human resource management, these are all specialized areas. Energy management is a specialized area by itself. So if you park energy management under facility management, you can ask people in the facility management, do they have enough on their plate to do every single day? You can ask them. All right? You can ask them. You're talking about the engineering major. Okay. Do they have enough on their plate to look into every single day, which is the core business? You know, facility management to ensure no interruption to the production, no unnecessary breakdown, repair, troubleshooting, you know, all must be on the spot. Do they have enough? So if you park that under anyone, somebody else, an existing core task, can you get the best out of that? Especially if your operation, okay, your operation is high energy intensive, energy intensive operations. 
and you pay millions. Sometimes you pay hundred over thousand per month, even millions per month. All right, uh, for that, and yet you don't really have somebody looking into that properly. Interesting, right? What I can see, that's why in the market, right? In the market, in other market, you know, uh, uh, like you know, I I did some research on my own, right? Uh, in UK market, uh, even other market, even in even in Singapore, even in uh, you know, and I think the way I look at it, in in European uh, areas, Euro European side, uh, the role of a new manager is already being recognized by the market, so the the market themselves define the role of the manager and they will when they source for engineer manager they know what to expect but in the ASEAN side like you know uh, Thailand Japan uh, they are governed by the regulation or by the law and the law has each law has quite comprehensive roles of uh, engineer managers by law all right so in Malaysia it's not yet so my question is that if you have somebody manage your facility if you have somebody manage your human, you have somebody manage your communication, your quality, and you are paying millions a month, for hundreds over thousands a month, okay, thousands and over thousands a month, and yet you don't have energy manager. At the same time, okay, this is the best part. So when this is in the same time, you know that energy price is uncertain. Okay. It recently, right, in Malaysia, when suddenly the ICPT surcharge imposed, okay, some company end up paying another 50%, you know, for a few more millions, you know, a few more hundred thousands every month on the cost of the electricity. And gas price has been increasing. Okay, electricity price, I don't see the sign of decreasing because uh, in Malaysia, the coal price is increasing. Gas price is increasing, so the two fuels are being used mainly for the electricity generation. So don't expect the electricity price to be reused. And when, when the ICPT charge, surcharge imposed, everyone uh, like pretend like shock. <laughs> and and they start to look around, you know that. And no one, so it's become another additional job at hot basis to existing managers, to existing executive. My question is that can they perform to their very best when they are and they have the existing on their plate? Because energy management, all right, as in energy management, energy management, you know, to become energy efficient, you know, as a company, to become energy efficient, okay, you need this is very, very essential, very critical for you to continuously analyze, okay, analyze, understand, control and monitor and find a way how to optimize your energy consumption. This is ongoing job every single day. Somebody who can observe, somebody who can take immediate action, if necessary, to avoid unnecessary wastages from the energy consumption. Because it's quite, you know, it's, you, can, you can agree with me, right? Having a professional or a dedicated personnel who are well-trained, knowledgeable enough, all right? Uh, or you maybe don't have to be an expert, all right? Having that kind of dedicated personnel in this energy management field itself, okay, to get the best out of your energy management activities as on ongoing uh, activities is critical. Okay. It's critical, okay, to get the right people, the dedicated people, all right? Because it's critical, you know, for you to get when you managing your energy, you need to get the best result. The best result can only be gained or be obtained by a trained, dedicated, and personnel with uh, so-called focus. Because energy managers is a professional. It's a professional. They are professional. Energy management is a, a is a field by itself. Require certain degree of knowledge, uh, so-called uh, so-called skills. Okay, and method or techniques to get the best out of that. That's what I would see. That, that, that's how I see it. Okay, because they come with a specific knowledge. Energy manager come with a specific knowledge. Even some, even sometimes expertise and techniques to do the right thing. For example, if no one in the company 
know to how exactly establish the, pro the proper energy performance indicator, energy baseline for the company. How can they know, how can they assess the performance of the company in terms of energy? How do they know they are good or not, they are efficient or not? So you, if you don't know all that, you may respond, just respond to the situation. Okay, you, okay, add up, you may end up being scammed by all those black, black box devices. They call it so-called energy saving devices without proper assessment. All right. So that's why this is what I can see. So because the, having the dedicated person, okay, is always good. That's why if you have somebody dedicated, you know, on looking into your energy meter, you get the best result. The best part of that, the best result is you reduce energy cost. And you can avoid or you can avoid unnecessary cost. Maybe you should pay this much because you have you have somebody dedicated to manage it, you have to pay only this much. Simple like that. The concept of avoided cost. Or from this much, okay, uh, BAU, business as usual today, you can go, right? You can go lower and keep improving. If you if you don't have dedicated personnel as an ongoing basis, okay, what you have all right normally, you may do something, you invest something, you go here. So when that person has something else to do or busy or left, you go back here. Go <laughs> back here. <laughs> here. Okay, that's how I look. I will see uh, I see. Okay, that's why. Because be, having any manager. What you can expect from engine manager, the energy manager. Even engine manager, you know, at least they can have, you can have somebody dedicated and you can manage your energy systematically. Because among the key requirements of being energy manager, just like quality manager, quality manager, they have they have energy management system, uh, quality management system. Safety manager, they know me, they, they know about safety management system. Okay. Similar to energy, if energy manager, they should know about the energy management system. So you can expect they can manage your energy resources systematically. All right, and then that's where you can get the best result out of that. All right, so this is my <laughs> thought on this Friday. Today is Friday. <laughs> okay, so because this is often being overlooked. Okay, for you to get the best out of your energy consumption uh, in terms of optimizations, in terms of your minimal cost or optimized cost, you must have somebody dedicated for that. Okay, so if you don't, okay, just like what's happening now, okay, people are scrambling around looking for solution, but most the way I look at it mostly are uh, so called uh, reactive. Okay. Uh, being reactive, you know, you can may you may you may be able to mitigate the impact, but normally short term. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. For example, you know, even now, right? If suddenly now the surcharge is high, you get somebody look into the certain technology, okay, efficient technology, for example, for motor, efficient motor, you place motor with more efficient motor, all right, because of now current situation. But after ten years, fifteen years, okay, when you want to replace the motor. Okay, now maybe you don't mind to pay a bit more to get more saving because of the efficient motor. But after 15 years, 10 years, you want to replace the motor, the person may end up going for the cheapest motor, something like that. There's no continuation, there's no dedication, all that. Okay, different idea about having something. Okay, so that's that's how I look at it. That's why it's quite actually it's quite imperative, all right. Uh, energy managers uh, to know that, to, to to notice that. Energy managers do give values. Okay, do give values to your company when you have one. Okay, when you have one, okay, uh, it has give value. Because currently, the way I look at it, the role of energy managers has been uh, have been evolved. Right? Uh, now if you look at the in, in, in uh, the old way, right? Initially it was uh, it's very uh, decentralized, all right. Uh, just you know, uh, part of a job of somebody. Okay, uh, normally facilities and a facility engineer or facilities manager, and then uh, you can't even get uh, not easy to get budget. You have to fight. You know the budget 
just like any other uh, so-called department station to get a budget for energy projects or energy projects. And then this, uh, the, the, the role has evolved. Now it has evolved into, uh, you know, a more so-called, you know, a strategic, okay? A more strategic uh, uh, involved in the even asset selection, you know, that use energy, all right? And then uh, everything being looked, you know, uh, holistically, systematically, all right, and then some uh, energy manager now are uh, the current the, the, for the, the, the mature, you know, uh, energy management in the company. They are directly reporting, you know, to the top management. They're involved in the decision making, you know. They play more a strategic role than technical role as a technical personnel. All right, this is how it's been evolved. Even uh, the new roles now, what have it emerged, right? Because it's have to work, you know, cross functionality. Right? You have to get the buy in from everyone. You have to go to the finance, go to the other departments, you know, that more connection involved. And then, then the next one is must be data driven, a lot of data to be processes and to be processed. All right, that data driven based, uh, to make decision based on data, data driven decision making kind of thing. And then you have to keep improving. Okay, you have to keep improving. So by having, by being in that strategic level, they can improve better. They can get better results. This is what's happening now. Because being a manager is quite challenging. Let me share with you some challenges that they are facing every single day, okay, or <laughs> ongoingly. Because normally, it's difficult, you know, it's normally difficult for them okay, to move from tactical to strategic engine management, from just providing the solution to make it move, to make things happen through management. All right, it's not easy, okay, because, uh, because most companies, they are result oriented. So if engine manager just uh, you know being seen as technical personnel, all right, they can give solution but they cannot guarantee result because they are not involved in the decision making. It's not in the, involved in the strategic matters, decision making. All right, and then because the problem for uh, challenge of uh, another challenge of being engine manager, they also being asked to do more with, with less. What I mean, you know, by this, okay, they are expected to give bigger saving. More, more saving every single uh, you know targeted period, but no resources, no training, even no pro proper job scope, just on top of the existing job. It's quite sad, right? <laughs> okay, and then uh, no training, no proper training, you know, because always being given, being asked to do more to get more by having less. Okay, it's anti management requires some kind of resources. Proper training, proper support, systematically uh, an ongoing basis, not just one off. Because once you install your system that use energy, they will last there for the next 15, 20 years. Okay, and then another one, okay, they are expecting to give big returns just like any other department. Okay, <laughs> okay, you are the expected, it's quite challenging, it's quite challenging because. They are expected to uh, give returns, you know, instantly. Okay, just like any other department, just like production. How can you compete with production? You know that. Everyone is promoting their performance by energy manager without proper training, without proper resources, expecting to give whatever others are giving, promising or something. Okay, it's quite challenging. Okay, okay. The challenges are, you know, I, I, I repeat, okay, one is they have to move from tactical to strategic and they are, they're supposed to move to that, but they often haven't got the opportunity because they're often being seen as the tactical or technical personnel, not involved decision making. And then second one, they're being asked to do more with less, no, no proper training, no proper resources to do technical study, no, cannot do energy audit and all that. And finally, they're expected to give more. Okay, uh, promise instant return, a, vi a visible return, you know, less like any other department with all the less being provided to them. <laughs> okay, okay, so I would like to end this video somehow with these questions. Okay, uh, this is the question that a company or business owner or top management should ask themselves. Okay, I got several questions here, I have to check my list. Okay, okay, to, to justify. Or, or for you to decide whether should you or shouldn't you have a dedicated energy manager position in your company or not. 
Okay, the first one is okay, ask yourself, and then what if you question yes or no? You answer yes or no. Okay, the first one, do you consider okay energy cost is important in your company? Okay, yes or no? Okay, second one, okay, do you know exactly okay your current energy performance and has it been monitored and used as input in the business decisions? In your strategic decisions, in your investment in your company. Okay. So again, okay, do you know exactly your current energy performance and has it been monitored and used in the business decisions? Because I can tell you it's very simple. I'll give you an example. If you just want to save, let's say, 10,000 of the two so called uh, products, okay, for example, you want to change Chile, old Chile, new Chile. If you just want to save 10, 20,000 at the upfront cost, and you, you may end up going for cheaper chiller, okay? But you may end up paying hundreds or even millions, you know, over the next 15 to 20 years. That's how the chiller life cycle, life time, roughly. Okay? Somebody can, somebody can save cheaper to save 20,000 now, Okay, you may end up paying hundred over thousand or every single month, every year. Okay, even millions you know, for the next 15 to 20 years. <laughs> okay, and then the third one are shareholders, you know, are your company shareholders asking you to reduce any consumption or to develop the sustainability projects in your uh, in this area? Okay, yes or no? Okay, and then do you think that you need to increase, you know, your self-consumption and your consumption through renewable energy, renewable energy or alternative energy option, uh, alternative energy resources? Yes or no? Okay, and then the next question. Do you need to make improvement to your sustainability or ESG or environmental, so environment, social and governance or carbon footprint reporting? Okay, and then the next yes or no? Okay, and then do you need to add value to your CSR report? Okay, and then do you need to reduce your investment? Okay, in in the renew renewable energy sources, reduce your investment in the RE sources as an option to mitigate the higher energy price. You know, with the uh, supply for utility now. Okay, and then another questions: Have you had before, right? A proposal for improvement that can save you a lot of money, energy from energy, but it cannot proceed. You know, you cannot pursue uh, proceed further because lack of knowledge. Okay, lack of knowledge and skills to accept that properly. So you just hang up that. So we have something very good, maybe very good, but no one really look into that because you are so busy with other tasks. Okay, yes or no. You used to have a project or proposal solution that give, can save you millions or hundreds over thousands, but no one really looked into that to assess that properly with the right knowledge and expertise. Okay, and then lastly, has anyone you know in your company has been responsible and accountable of the overall strategy of energy in the company? Okay. So how many questions here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions. Okay, eight questions. All right. So if you answer to those questions, okay, uh, the answer is yes, at at least one, okay, or more. So the answer you know, means that you need to have the energy manager in your company. Okay, because. Answering or addressing these questions in you know, all the questions, okay, basically is the role of NG manager. And actually, uh, this will be the first step you know, to answering all the questions just now. Um, looking, looking into all the questions is the first step, you know, uh, into producing uh, a, a suitable framework, a robust framework here yeah, for making significant uh, continual, uh, significant and continual strategic improvement in your company when it comes to energy. All right, so this is how it is. So, I, okay, so, so to wrap up this video, I talk about why you need to have energy manager, why energy management is a, a shared bar, you know, energy management is a specialized field by itself. 
need, need a specialized personnel or dedicated personnel for energy manager to look into that. Okay, and big energy manager also having uh, their own challenges. Okay, I highlight three just now. Okay, three uh, you know uh, point which basically uh, they, are, they 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 have to change you know, their their they, they should be seen you know more strategic than technical. Okay, uh, involve the more decision making and they are expecting to do more with less you know resources and all that, and they are expecting to give results that any other department without less well, with less. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, and then I share with you uh, questions. Okay, that as a company owner or business owner or top management should ask, should, should answer yes or no. That will help you to decide whether you should, you should have a dedicated energy manager in your plan or not. Okay, so I think uh, that's all my sharing today about energy manager. Why a company? Okay, why a company? Especially companies uh, that are using energy intensively where energy costs uh, are quite significant to the business and always sensitive to the uh, fluctuation of the energy prices, you know, especially now, okay, uh, especially now. And on top of that, on top of that, also energy is the biggest contributor of GHG emission, okay, so that will help you to mitigate the climate change impact as well, okay, to, in the global warming. That's why you start to manage your energy, you know, with the right personnel, dedicated personnel, like energy manager, you can use all that, you know, as a part of increasing your presence or visibility uh, and your, your prominence in uh, showing to your market, to the prospect, to the investors that you are looking into the, uh, whatever you do on energy will help to, you also contribute to the, achieving the SDG goals, SDG targets, right? SDG targets, you know, net zero targets, and also the improving your uh, ESG reporting uh, Right, so I think that's all. Thank you very much for watching. I hope we can see you again in the next video. Okay, so feel free to comment. Okay, anything you can go to my website, zaini4ee.com. All right, see you again.